Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time, and this week's topic, the psychology of winning. A lot of you guys have the candlestick charts down pretty well, right? Up, down, left, right, pivot, support, trend lines, bottoming tails, topping tails, volume, all that good stuff, right? But what you're missing is right here. You don't have the right psychology. You don't have the right mindset. You don't have the right belief system. So today, we're going to dig deep into that kind of stuff. A lot of people say, Jared, you need to do more psychology lectures. Well, today, we're going to do that. In fact, there's very few charts in today's lectures. The problem is, these lectures aren't sexy, so a lot of people don't watch them, but yet these are probably some of the most important lectures that we do because your mindset is everything. It's literally everything. Breaking your trading plan, risking too much money, selling too soon. All these are mental lapses. And today we're going to talk about why you do some of the things that you do and how you can correct some of those things that you do to supercharge your trading and make yourself an even better trader than you already are. All right. If you like these videos, click that like button, smash hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is the psychology of winning. Um, not all of this. The title I took from a great book by Dennis Waitley. Uh, it's actually called The Psychology of Winning. Uh, and I got this, I don't know, maybe when I was in high school. I mean, my dad gave me some tapes called The Psychology of Winning by Dennis Waitley. Um, and this lecture isn't specific to that. But the idea of it, the, you know, the psychology of winning, what it takes to be a winner, um, is very important to traders. Uh, we're going to dig deep into not only psychology, but belief systems, why you do the things that you do, and maybe how you can fix some of those things that you do. Um, because when it comes to anything in life, but especially trading, your mindset is extremely important. Like a lot of traders understand candlesticks, bottoming tails, topping tails, volume, support, resistance, etc., trend lines, whatever. But it doesn't matter if you can't get your head right, if you can't get your mind right. Does that make sense? I think about it like this. Um, I don't know if this is a, a good analogy or not, because not everybody watches sports. And, and I've heard this to be true, but I, don't, I can't confirm it to be true. Um, but Shaquille O'Neal was a terrible free throw shooter, right? That's a fact. I mean, he shot like 50, 55% for his whole career, which is crap, okay? But apparently in practice, he was actually a pretty decent, not great, but 70, 75% free throw shooter. My point is, clearly, he could make free throws. But during game time, something afflicted him or affected him to where his percentage went way down. So many of you are looking at charts and patterns when the market's not open and you're doing a great job. And then the market opens, you're still doing a great job of those patterns, but now all of a sudden you're having trouble pressing the button or when you press the button, managing it properly, okay? So my point I'm getting at is it's nice to be technically proficient. It's great and you should be, right? And that, that actually comes fairly quickly in this business, but... Technically proficient and psychologically a mess, that's the average trader. Not the brand new trader, the average trader. Technically proficient, psychologically a mess. So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that today and why traders are the way they are and possibly how we might be able to sort that out and make you or help you overcome some of that stuff. So psychology of winning. You must believe to achieve. Yes, you are capable of success. Do you believe it, though? This looks so cliche and so corny. Yes, Jared, I have to believe. Blah, 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 blah. I do your affirmations every day. Blah, right? And that's the problem. You guys all think this is a cornball thing to do, right? But the problem is you don't really believe. You don't. See, saying you believe and actually doing it are completely different. See, saying something is nice, but doing something is better. Don't, and you guys have heard me say this before, 
Don't tell your spouse you love them. Show them you love them. Do something nice for them. Wash the dishes. Take care of the kids. Whatever it is. You could, you could talk words out your ass all day long. It doesn't matter. Words are cheap. They're hollow. I'm not saying that they can't be powerful. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying words without action mean nothing. Put the action to the words. Say it, then go do it. That's when real change happens. But saying it alone is not enough. It's not. You have to do both. Okay? So when somebody says, yes, I believe, well, the actions don't suggest that you believe. Right? So here's a little clip. I, I, I pulled this out. It's just, I don't know. I haven't done a little video inside a video in a while. For those of you who have never seen Days of Thunder and hate cars, this, this is going to be the most boring one minute of your life. Okay? But think about this for a second. Just, just, just give this some thought for a second. Just listen to this. Slow down in the turn four. Just keep your foot on the gas and drive right by him on the outside. Harry, you told me nobody goes to the outside on turn four. Well, now I'm telling you different. If you go to the outside, you can hold. He's going to end up in the wall. All right, Cole. The pace car's about ready to duck on off. We don't have a whole lot of time to talk about this. Well, tell me how. It's because we got a real good set of match tires on. What? What? Those tires are matched, perfect, and staggered spec. You're gonna get it killed! The pace car's about ready to duck on off. If you go to the outside, you can hold it. All right, Harry, when it comes to the car, I take your word. All right. Now, some of you, I think, Jared, I have no idea what was just said in there, but hopefully you could read, hopefully you could read the subtitles. Okay? Think about that for a second. Now, again, I know that was a little kind of cheaply photoshopped in there, but why doesn't he believe? Because he was told it can't be done, right? Originally, he's told it can't be done. He said, nobody passes on the outside, Harry. You told me that, and you know everything about this car. So if Harry just goes to him and says, but now I'm telling you different, you're not going to believe him. So what does he have to do? He has to convince him and how does he do this? He convinces him by saying, those are special tires. Those are different than the tires I told you it couldn't be done on. Those are staggered special. And then he goes, okay, Harry, when it comes to the car, I trust you. Do you see the difference there? You can't just tell somebody something. You have to give them a reason. And that's one of the biggest problems with traders. Your why is simply not big enough. Right? So when you think about where you are as a trader, and we're going to use this word a lot, and somebody actually just typed it in. Jordan just said, unmull's integrity. We're going to be using that word several times today, okay? Because it's the only word that really matters in trading and in life in general. If you don't have integrity, you don't have much in life. You really don't, okay? Because words are cheap these days, but actions, well, they're a lot different, but they're harder to achieve. So you have to get to a point where you actually believe, but here is the conundrum. Here is the challenge. It's like faith. You have to believe before you achieve. You're like, oh, snap. Yes. Has he ever passed somebody on the outside? No, because he was told you can't do it, right? So he's never even tried it before. So, he is actually believing before he is achieving. Harry comes in and says, oh no, those tires are special. Trust me, it will work. Trust me, it will work. So you gotta believe before you're going to achieve. This is your trading plan. So I'm gonna bring it all the way back to trading. Your trading plan is telling you, believe. Believe me, the achievement will come later. Just believe me. This is what you're supposed to do. Believe that it's the right thing to do. But many of you just don't. And that's why you break your plan. Okay? So you sit here and say, yeah, I believe. And then you go out and break your trading plan. Well, that's not really believing, is it? Okay? So now, a couple comments on this. And I never really gave this much thought. And I know, I know, you can't blanket statement everybody. But I think as a general rule, you should motivate with the positive ideas. What I mean by this is don't motivate yourself with the negative of an idea 
always use positive reinforcement. Now, I get it. I get it. John McEnroe, there are people out there in the world that negative ideas motivate them, right? But as a general rule for most people, I would tell them to motivate yourself with the positive of a thought, the positive of an idea. An example, instead of saying, don't sell too soon, say, just wait for the target. Wait for the target. Okay? If you have... One of those, when you think about it, has a negative connotation. Don't sell too soon. It's, it's, it's the negative of the idea. Don't do something. Whereas if the positive of the idea is do something, right? The other one has a positive connotation. Wait for the target, okay? Stop trying to motivate yourself with the negative of an idea. And this is from the psychology of winning for those of you who have actually listened to it. But when the manager goes up to the mound to the pitcher, you don't go out and tell the pitcher, don't throw the curve ball. You tell the pitcher, throw the fastball. Do you see the difference there? You're telling him what you want him to do, throw the fastball. The other one's telling what you don't want him to do, which is don't throw the curve. Motivate with the positive of an idea. Don't say I'm not very good at this. Simply say I'm improving every day. The mindset matters. How you approach something matters because you're telling yourself you can't. You can't. I'm not very good at this. It's a negative connotation. You're belittling yourself by saying that to yourself. Now, again, there may be 10% of people that this works very well for. Motivating them with the negative probably works. But for 90% of people, motivate yourself with the positive of something. Don't say, I don't want to live in a tent. Say, I want to live in a mansion or whatever it is that you're striving to do. Focus on the positive of what you're trying to achieve, not the negative, okay? Now, again, I'm not completely opposed to that. If you want to have in front of you on your desk the picture of a tent and a picture of a mansion, you can say this or this, your choose, okay, for some people that works. But as a general rule, motivate yourself with the positive of an idea. Tell yourself, wait for the target. Don't say, don't sell too soon, okay? So... There are different types of failure, guys, when we talk about mindsets, okay? And what Zig Ziglar has to say at the bottom here is true. Failure is an event. Failure is not a person. You are not a failure. Your actions have led to failure, but you are not a failure. So my point simply is you can change your behavior, and by changing your behavior, you change your action. And by changing your action, you change the outcome. It's, it's, a, it's a process. It's a cycle, right? So there's five types of failure. Failure to do your best. Failure to learn or improve. Failure to accept responsibility for your actions. And the failure to execute or plan. And the failure to have the proper attitude. You have control. You have control over every single one of these. These are not out of your realm of control. Doing your best is pure choice. You guys ever listen to David Goggins? I think that's how you say his name. And he'll tell you. I mean, this guy's one hell of a motivational speaker. And he'll sit there and go, of course, of course, there are days I wake up and I don't want to go run 10 miles. Of course, there are days I wake up and I don't feel good. Duh, I'm a human being. That's normal. But I don't let that stop me from being my best, from doing my best. That's the problem. You guys, and the reason, and he talks about this, and the reason is he goes, I don't focus on the negative. I focus on the positive. And the positive is if I do this, if I get up and run those 10 miles, if I get up and go to work, good things are going to happen for me. But if I focus on the negative, that's a rabbit's hole. That's a Pandora's box. I do not want to go down because it leads to more negative thought. So the failure to do your best is a decision. It's a choice. Every morning you wake up, you have the choice to give it 110% or to slack off. And the people that are high level achievers, 99% of the time choose to give it 110%. They're not perfect, they're humans, they'll make a few mistakes, but 99% of the time they're giving it 110%. People that aren't successful, maybe they give it their best 50% of the time. That's not enough, it's not enough. Failure to learn and failure to improve. Well, that kind of leads back to failure to do your best. 
So when I talk to you guys as traders, I sit here and I say, you guys have heard me say it frequently. What have you done today that will make you better tomorrow? Right? It's all about improvement all the time. So what are you doing right now? What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing the next day? What are you doing that makes your future brighter, better, more productive, more successful, more fruitful? Ask yourself that question every day, okay? Failure to accept responsibility. You know what we call this. What do we call this, guys? Talk to me. Two letter, three letter, sorry, two word, three word answer here. It's very common in society today. What do we call failure to accept responsibility? Caesar has it. I call it victim mentality. That's it. Failure to accept responsibility is a victim mentality. Look, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am not aloof to challenges that people encounter. And I'm not aloof to the fact that some people have a starting line that's further ahead than others. I understand this. But there is nothing productive that comes from believing you are a victim. Even if you are, it's not productive to think of yourself as a victim because you're giving power and control to someone else. If you accept the responsibility for your actions, you are also saying, I am in control and I can change this. But if you don't accept that responsibility, you're giving that power up to somebody else. It's just not productive, okay? It's just not productive, all right? Failure to execute. This is back to failure to do your best. If you're not executing your plan, it's because either it doesn't mean that much to you or you don't believe in it. I mean, those are really kind of the two things it comes down to. It doesn't mean that much to you. The why is not big enough or you just don't believe in it. Okay, go out there and execute. That's also doing your best. Failure to have the proper attitude. And this goes back to failure to accept responsibility. Guys, this is where people miss. When, when motivational speakers talk, this is what people miss about it. They are not up there on stage telling you every day is going to be strawberries and cream. It's not what they're trying to tell you. They're trying to tell you that you're going to have good times. You're going to have bad times. But if you have a good attitude, you're going to have a lot more good times than bad times. Because how you see the world and how you view the world has a very big impact on what you do in the world. Right? Just think about that for a second. How you see the world matters tremendously to whether or not you believe you can be successful or not. So having a good attitude... Man, it's, it's a great thing to have because every day you wake up, you have that attitude of every day I wake up, the sun shines. Well, that's awesome. That means every day you wake up, you're ready to rock and roll. You're ready to take this day and do the best you can with it. If you have the attitude of, it's just another Monday and my boss is probably going to yell at me again today. Traffic's probably going to suck. I'm probably going to, you know, get yelled at again. Well, what, what's productive about that? Not much, not much. So that will lead into other aspects of your life. And that negative energy will impact other people and other people won't want to be around you because you're that negative person, the negative Nelly. You ever meet somebody, and we, we all have, okay? You ever meet somebody that just has an aura about them, a charisma about them, this just energy that flows through them and you're like, wow, give me more of that. Like, like you, almost, you almost get goosebumps when speaking to them sometimes. Like when they talk to you, you're just kind of like, wow, this is different. I don't talk to that many people like this. That is the type of person you want to be, right? You want to be the examples that other people want to follow. And remember, failure is an event. It's not a person. You can change. You can accept responsibility. You can do your best. You can learn and you can improve. You can execute your plan. You can do all these things. No one is telling you you cannot. Only you. And at the end of the day, guys, and hear me out on this. 
You're not here to impress me. You're not here to impress your friends. You're not here to impress society. The only person that you need to be okay with is the person that looks back at you in the mirror. If you can't live with that person, you have problems. Please that person first. Everything else will come later, and it shouldn't even be that important to you in the first place. I'm not saying you should be an asshole to everybody just because it doesn't matter. I'm simply saying you want to be able to look in the mirror and go, you know what? I am doing my best. I am putting my best foot forward. I have challenges, but I am overcoming them. Look in that mirror and have that person stare back at you, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Okay? That's the only person you need to impress. All right? So, the question then becomes, why? Why do you fail to do what's necessary? Right? When you think about trading, why do you sell too soon? Why are you confused? Why are you frustrated? Why don't you believe in your trading plan? You say you believe, but your actions suggest you do not because you sold too soon. And if you believed in your plan, then you wouldn't have sold too soon, right? Do you have a fear of loss? Now, when I say fear of loss, this could be in any aspect of life. This isn't just fear of losing a trade or fear of having a losing day. This could be relationship fear. Some people are so scared to open up they don't even want to be in a relationship because they're scared they'll have to open up. Well, that's not good. It's like that scene in Goodwill Hunting, right? You guys have seen the movie when they're on the bench. You're so worried about every negative thing that possibly could happen down the road, you're forgetting to live today. Stop. Guys, fear, it's part of life. It's part of success. Failure, it's part of life. And it's part of success. No one is perfect. Newsflash, no one is perfect. Okay? You're not either. You're never going to be. But you know what fear does? Fear motivates. Fear expands your paradigm. Fear gets you out of your comfort zone. And if you can't face fear, you're never going to leave your comfort zone. You're never going to expand your paradigm, and you're never going to be better than you are today. Well, that's not good enough for me. For you it might be, but it's not good enough for me. So I'm going to look fear in the eye, and there are going to be times I'm scared shitless, and I'm going to say I'm doing it anyway. You know what it's like? It's like when you're struggling to do all or nothing, and you're sitting there, and you're just tapping on the desk. And you really want to get out of this. I could get out of this for a small gain right now. You need to walk away. Embrace the fear. Stare at it or walk away. Whatever it takes, but overcome it. Right? And again, some of the analogies we use are kind of corny, but they really actually have impact and meaning. You know, why is Batman as silly as it sounds? Why does he wear a bat suit? He is embracing his fear of bats, conquering his fear. So for some of you, I'm not saying this will work for all of you, but your fear of selling too soon seriously for a second. Now, you might laugh at some of the stuff I say, but I am deadly serious when I say it. Get into a trade, do all or nothing, handcuff yourself, handcuff yourself, your hands behind your back. Handcuff your hands to the desk, far enough away that your nose can't touch the keyboard. You think I'm kidding. Stare at that trade. Make it the only trade on the screen. Stare at every single penny. Far enough that your nose can't touch the keyboard and your hands are tied behind your back. What's that going to do? It's going to force you to deal with your fear. You don't have a, you don't have it. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to sit there and stare and just stare and just stare and just stare until you can just deal with it without needing the handcuffs. What is this analogy in liken to? Addiction. Now, we talk about people, places, and things, change them. Yes, and you should do that with trading and in life. Be around successful people. Be around people that help motivate you. Be around positive people. Be around people that lift you up, not push you down. But when you talk about it with addiction, it's like, hey, you want to get to the point where you can walk into a bar with friends and drink a glass of water and why they drink next to you. That doesn't happen when you first start. When you go to your first AA meeting, the best thing you can do is stay away from alcohol. But eventually, you want to be strong-willed enough 
to be able to be around it, it doesn't matter. That's trading without having to walk away. That's you staring at your trades without needing to take a walk. Stare at every penny. I'm not saying you should stare at every penny, but you understand the analogy. You should be able to sit there and look at it. Up, down, sideways, eh, it's just another trade. It's just another number, okay? Get rid of the need to be right. You're going to be right sometimes, and newsflash, you're going to be wrong sometimes. You're not needing to be right all the time. No one is. And the most, some of the most successful people in the world have failed more than they succeeded. And you'll hear Mark Cuban talk about this frequently. You only need to win one time. Now in trading, that's different, but you understand what I'm saying. You only need to find one trading plan that matches your personality style. You don't need to find 27 trading plans to match your personality, just one. You may go through 27 trading plans to find the one that matches your personality style, but you only need to find it one time. And when you find it, your life will be changed forever. Let me repeat that. When you find it, your life will be changed forever. You think Cass is enjoying his life? You think Stefan, who's on vacation right now, is enjoying his life? You think Cliff's enjoying his life? You think Unwall's enjoying his life? They found a plan that meets their personality style. A plan that keeps their ego quiet. The problem is many of you guys, it's like that line in the original Top Gun. Your ego's writing checks that your trading account can't cash. Because you don't have the proper trading plan yet. You haven't found that yet. Okay? So when you think about... Why do you fail to do what's necessary? Ask yourself those questions. Is it frustration? Is it confusion? Is it fear of loss? Is it your ego? Is it you don't believe in yourself? Well, the real answer when it comes to trading, you just don't understand yourself well enough, right? I, I say this all the time. I'm almost tired of using this analogy, but the person who waits in line at Disney World for two hours with their kids is not the same person who's trading in front of your computer right now. Yes, physically you look the same, but mentally you are different, okay? You're waiting in line at Disney, why? To make your kids happy, probably. You're selling too soon on that trade to make your ego happy. But here's the problem, and this is the part I really want you to really internalize when I say this, like pay attention. You can log out after I say this. This is a vicious cycle, and it's a conundrum of biblical proportion. Your ego has a need to be right. Therefore, your ego wants you to sell too soon when you see green. But wait, you sell too soon when you're in green and you feel good because you're like, I was right, I made some money. But here's the conundrum. When that stock eventually goes on to hit your full target, where you're supposed to make three or four or five grand, but you only made one grand, guess what happens? Your ego recognizes it was wrong. And now it chastises you for being wrong. Do you see that? Do you see how your ego just messed with you? Just literally effed with you. Your ego's like, sell it, sell it, sell it. I gotta be right. Take the grand, take the thousand dollars now. And then later on it goes up to five grand and you're sitting there and you're pissed off because now your ego knows it was wrong. And it's just playing mental games with you. You just can't win. And this is why you have to leave your ego in the closet, suppress those feelings and thoughts because they are not helpful. And you will just sit there and circle and circle and circle and circle around for a long time. So you can think about it like this. Short-term pain for long-term gratification. Short-term gratification or long-term pain. That's your choice. Short-term pain, long-term gratification. Short-term gratification, long-term pain. It's like smoking. Go ahead, smoke for 10 or 15 years. The next 30 aren't gonna be very pleasant. Think about it like that. So the real answer is, you don't understand yourself. Until you do, you're gonna have a very hard time overcoming these things because your ego is going to lead your life, right? It's going to make all of the decisions for you. You're going to push integrity into the corner because your ego is more powerful than it until you understand yourself. And once you understand what makes you click, what your 
deficiencies are as well as what your positive traits are. Until you understand those things, becoming a great trader will elude you. Absolutely, positively elude you. And this is, in my opinion, the single greatest problem with traders. They think they're something they are not. I'll repeat. They think they are something that they are not. You're not the person waiting for your Frappuccino at Starbucks. You are a trader in front of your desk, and it brings out different emotions than waiting in line at Disney World. But you're not believing that. You're lying to yourself. Give it some thought. But at the end of the day, there's only really one kind of failure that matters. You guys have seen this slide before. I put it out there a couple years ago. Right? The only thing that matters is whether or not you're giving up on it. If you're not giving up on it, guess what? There's always a chance to succeed. There's always a chance to succeed. Okay? A great example of this, and I don't know anything about this person. Okay? I don't even know his name. Okay? And I apologize for that. It's no disrespect. I just don't know the person's name. You know that Korean dude who was in Goonies? Hey, you guys. Right? All that stuff. Uh-huh. And he just won an Oscar, did he not? For, what was that movie? Everything, Every Time, Everywhere. I don't know what it's called. All right? He just won an Oscar. True? Okay? It is true. Okay. That was 40 years ago, give or take. Probably more than 40 years ago. I don't remember exactly when Goonies came out. 82, 84, something like that. Okay? Have you seen him in a lot of movies through the years? I haven't. You know, maybe he has been, but I haven't seen him. But he never gave up. He just kept grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. And now, no one can ever take away the fact that he is an Oscar winner. Okay? The problem is, you guys are just giving up. You're giving up on your dream. And I can't, to me, and, and this is just a personal comment, but I don't even know what that feels like. I don't want to know what that feels like. Think about it for a second. You let the world get to you so bad. You let people's negative comments get to you so bad that you were willing to give up on your dream for it. Internalize that for a second. You're willing to say, gosh, I hate my boss. I hate rush hour traffic and I don't make much money. But I'm okay with doing that for the rest of my life because I gave up on my dream. I don't know what to say to that. I'm almost speechless. I am not wired this way, so I cannot imagine giving up on a dream. I just cannot imagine it. Because if you give up on a dream, what are you doing? You're telling yourself it's not possible. Or I'm not willing to work hard enough to get it, which means it's not that important to you. I think that's sad. Rejection, sadness, frustration, disappointment. Those are just emotions that people feel. They're not failure. They're not failure at all. Unless you give up. You're going to feel all of those things. You're going to feel disappointment. You're going to feel frustration. I feel it on a daily basis at times. You're going to feel sadness. You're going to feel sadness when somebody you thought had your back doesn't have your back. When you thought somebody that really supported you in something doesn't support you. You're going to feel rejection at times. When you go to your family and say, hey, this is my goal, and they look at you and go, Shh, that's not going to happen. All of these things are going to happen to you. All, you're going to experience these emotions. Everyone does. But the only time those emotions actually matter is when they drive you to giving up. I can't relate to lazy people, right? We don't speak the same language. I don't understand you. I don't want to understand you. I don't want to understand the person that gives up. I'm thanking you slightly. Subconsciously, I'm thanking you because that's just one less person I'm competing with to get to my goal. It is. When you give up on something, you're giving up on yourself. You're giving up on your family. You're giving up on your friends. You're giving up on your dreams. Why? Because you're basically saying, I'm less than I can actually be. I don't understand that attitude. I told my wife that when we, when we got married. 
I said, I'll do anything for you, anything. But I won't give up on my dreams. That's the one thing I won't do. Because then I wouldn't be able to live with myself. And guess what? You wouldn't want to live with that person either. You wouldn't want to live with me giving up on my dreams. That's not the person you married. And I wouldn't expect you to. Never give up. Never, ever, ever give up. If you want it bad enough, never give up. Now, the funny thing is, and this is where I'm going to splash water on your face. Cold, cold, ice cold water. This is an Oprah moment. Oh, gosh. That's a great book, Oprah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so motivated. I just sat down and listened to Oprah for an hour. You know, get off the sofa. You're still sitting on the couch. The show's over. Now you're searching for Dr. Phil. Maybe he'll give me that little, little extra motivation. Dr. Phil finishes you like, is Tony Robbins on TV today? You got to get off your ass and actually go do it. Talking about doing it, that's just one step in the process. But actually, at some point, you're going to have to get off your ass, get off the sofa. Rainy day, cold day, snowy day, it doesn't matter. You got to get off and start doing something about it. Period. End of discussion. You can't just talk. You have to do, okay? So the question then is, what are you doing? As a trader, let's bring it back in. Are you taking too many trades? Are you not taking enough trades? Are you managing your trades poorly? Are you using poor money management? Are you trading without a plan? Are you breaking your current trading plan? Are you taking poor quality trades? Are you not treating this like a business? Work, not working hard enough, not being objective with yourself. What are you not doing that you need to be doing? Because if you were doing everything you were supposed to be doing, you wouldn't be listening to me right now because you'd be on your yacht, making a lot of money and saying, Farnsworth, more champagne, please. And can you bring the beluga? But you're not which means there's something here that you need to be improving upon. I mean it. There's something here that you need to be improving upon. And I want to take a little moment, a side moment, if you will. And I may get some blowback for this, and I don't really care. I get emails from time to time. I get comments in the chat room from time to time. Social media comments from time to time. Jared. Money is not everything. Okay. Well, I'll make you a bet. I can help more people with the money I have than you can being broke. You know why? Because I can still do all the same damn things you do when you're broke. Go volunteer at the soup kitchen. But I can also donate to charity and do all those other things because I have the money too. So I can all do all the same shit you do that you're broke and poor. I can, I can do all that because that doesn't cost money. It just costs time. And I have that because I have money. And I can do all the other things too. So don't sit here and tell me money's not that important. It's not the money. It's what the money enables you to do. It gives you the time, the freedom, the flexibility, oh, and the money to help other people. You can do far more when you have it than when you don't. So I'm not telling you that you should judge yourself on how much money you have. This is not what I am saying. I am simply saying you can do more with it than without it. So I'd rather have it. That's it. Because it, the money, it buys me time and it buys me freedom and it buys me flexibility. But you know what it also does? It buys me half a million dollar donations to my kids' schools. It's changing lives. But I can still go donate my time as well. I can do both. You can only do one. I can do both. So don't tell me it doesn't matter. And don't tell me it's not helpful. It is. Now, is it everything? No. But it certainly matters. And then ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? For more freedom, great. For more time, great. You can't have freedom if you don't have any money to buy your freedom, right? Why do you go to work for nine hours a day? Because your boss won't pay you the same if you work four hours a day. Tell me I'm wrong. 
Why do you work nine hour shifts or eight hour shifts or 10 hour shifts? Because your boss won't pay you the same amount of money if you work a three hour shift. Duh. Otherwise, everyone will work three hour shifts. Everyone will work three days a week. Hell, they wouldn't work at all. If they didn't have to, if money just fell into their lap. So yes, you're trading your time for money. When you have enough money, you don't have to make that trade off. Think about it. Now, back to trading. What are you doing that's causing you to be in the current position you're in as a trader? It may not be on this list, but it's somewhere. Maybe you're selling too soon. Maybe you're risking too much money. Maybe you're not studying enough, learning enough. Maybe you're not putting the time and the effort into this. Maybe you're over trading. Maybe you're under trading. Okay? You see, all this stuff right here, guys, this here, this three bar play right here, it's worthless without patience, discipline, effort, and time. That's all it is. It's crap. I know. I can't get enough of it. In Japan, they have the little like, um, like unchi signs, they call them. You'll see, Japanese are very, they look like little swirls. They all look like ice cream swirls. <laughs> I know. Imagine putting that on your cone. Anyway. Three bar play, great. Three bar play rips, great. Who cares? So what? If you don't have the patience to wait for the target, if you don't have the discipline and objectivity to wait for the pattern, if you don't put the time and the effort in to learning the pattern, it's worthless. It's as good as a pile of shit. That pattern is worthless if you can't hold it to target. That pattern is worthless if you don't recognize the pattern. See, this without this doesn't equal anything. You have to be the total package. You can put in effort, but misguided effort. It's true. It's like those people that go to the driving range and the only thing they do is hit their driver. Well, there's a lot of other clubs in your bag and 70% of golf is under 100 yards. So why are you spending all your time hitting your driver? Oh, my ego loves to drive the ball 300 yards. That's great. Yeah, I hit the trees when I get to the golf course because the driving range is like four times as wide as the golf course. Great. What are you doing? You're putting in effort, but you're not putting in purposeful effort, meaningful effort. Are you putting in purposeful, meaningful effort in trading? It doesn't have to take a long time, guys. It can be an hour or two a day. It doesn't have to be a long time, but it has to be purposeful. It has to be meaningful. It has to be directed and guided, right? Think about it. What good would it do if Kobe or Steph Curry or whoever practiced, I don't know, full court shots? That's all they did. Every practice, two hours a day, they practiced full court shots. Well, it's not very effective in a game situation. Because that shot is not high percentage enough. Does that make sense? So while I'm not saying you can't practice full court shots, but that should be a very small amount of your practice time. Most of your practice time should be on things that are actually important to winning games. Well, most of your practice and effort should be on things that you need improvement on. Things that will help make you a better trader. But ask yourself, are they? Are you practicing those things? Are you putting the effort into those things? I mean, the other day, somebody made the comment, I can't remember who it was, but, oh, I couldn't imagine recording myself. Why not? You're the only one that's going to see it. Is your ego so big or, or so damaged? It's one of the two. It's either so big it can't take it or it's so damaged it can't take it that you can't even watch yourself in the privacy of your own office? replaying your mistakes it's pathetic that means you just don't want it bad enough remember we talked about fear you're going to have some moments of fear it's life you're going to have some moments of uncomfortability uncomfortness is that even a word uncomfortness you're going to have some moments where it doesn't feel good Maybe even embarrassing. Oh, well. So what? Got news flash for you. Those people watching you, 
those people you're worried about, they're not perfect either. Discomfort. Thank you. Uncomfortness. <laughs> Killing me. They're not perfect either. So why do you care? Why do you care what they think? Your goals are for you. They're not for other people. I said this to you guys a long time ago. It's been a while since I've said this. Never be embarrassed by what you have to do to achieve your goals. If you have to go work at Circle K, if you have to go work at 7-Eleven, if you have to go dig ditches, if you have to be a greeter at Walmart because it helps move you closer to your goals, then that's what you're going to do go do. It doesn't matter if your best friend valedictorian from college who's worth a gazillion dollars passes you as you're greeting people at Walmart. That's not your concern. Your concern is only about you reaching your goals. Everyone else, that's just noise. It's background noise. It's not important to you. So why are you worried about it? Oh, but... But, but they might see me driving a 25-year-old crappy Honda Civic beater. So? Who cares? But they might see me, you know, at the checkout counter at uh, wherever. Who cares? There's no shame in this. I've had some of the crappiest jobs you can imagine in life. I look around today and I don't see those people that were negative Nellies back then. Don't worry about them. You know why? You know why? Because someday they're going to be the ones looking at you, envying you. Even if they do or they don't, it doesn't matter. You didn't do it for them anyway. You did it for you. Give that some thought, okay? So questions to ask yourself, right? Questions to ask yourself. Exactly right. Their opinion doesn't pay the bills. How well do you really know yourself? This is a tough one. Because everyone in media goes, of course I know myself. Duh. Duh. I know myself. Really? So why'd you sell too soon? After you told me you're a really patient trader, patient person. Uh, well, um, uh, because you don't know yourself. All right. Are you highly emotional, unemotional? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Are you technically savvy? Do you process information quickly? Are you a slow learner? Are you overly confident? Are you overly unconfident? All right, what type of personality? Are you a type A? What are you? Now, this is very helpful to have some people give you their opinion because, well, let's be fair. For most people, there are some people that just are negative Nellies, but for most people, they have a high, let's just say an elevated opinion of themselves, okay? An elevated opinion of themselves. And to be fair, people view the world differently. Some people think 10 hours a day is a long, hard working day. And I've met other people that will look you straight in the eye, deadly serious, not kidding. 12 hours a day is a half day of work, Jared. They will look you flat in the eye. 12 hours a day is a half day of work. Other people, 10 hours a day is like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I work so hard today. My point, we all see the world a little differently. So it's, it can be helpful to ask close family and friends, hey, what do you think some of my strengths and weaknesses are? Just get their opinion just to see what they feel, just to see if you're missing something about yourself. Because at the end of the day, what our goal here is, is to peel the onion back. We want to peel the onion back far enough that we're actually getting to the real core of the onion. We don't want to miss any layers here because guess what? The market will expose them. It will. If you miss something, the market will expose it. It's very good at doing that, okay? What's your daily schedule look like? Can you trade all day, half the day, one hour a day? Why is this important? You're going to have to match your, your schedule with your trading. Not everybody can afford to trade all day. They have other things they need to do, other responsibilities, jobs, family, whatever, other commitments. So the goal here is to ask yourself these questions. And then when you get answers to these questions, go, okay, now I know who I am. 
I know what my strengths and weaknesses are. I know what my schedule looks like. I know what my capital situation is. I know what my timeline for this is. Okay, now it's time to build a plan around those things. Because that plan will actually be meaningful. Right? 12 hours a day is a half day, right, Cass? Okay. Do you think it's possible to change your personality to accommodate your circumstances? Ooh, very good question, Aparna. That's a great question. The question, again, repeating. Do you think it's possible to change your personality to accommodate your circumstances and obstacles? Aparna, we do that every single day. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. We do it every day. Now, is it long lasting? Could we keep that up? That's the $64,000 question. Think about it. I'll give you a great example to that. My daughter, super friendly. One of the nicest people you'll meet. To her sister and brother, not so much. Not so much. She's tough, brutal, straight up in their face. Which one's the real personality? The one at home. The one at home. And she'll even tell you that. So my point I'm making is, depending upon what's in it for us is dependent upon whether or not we change our personality to accommodate the circumstance. I know sometimes these are tacky analogies. Tell me I'm wrong when you go to a bar, you see a girl, you're like, oh my gosh, hottest thing I've ever seen. You're not giving her your worst foot, you're giving her your best foot forward, right? You're telling everything she wants to hear. You are changing your personality to accommodate the circumstance. And then she finds out who you really are and you're like, oh, he's just another guy, next. So the question though is, can you keep it up? Right? That's the question. So ask yourself these questions, guys. Because once you get real answers to these questions, you'll be able to build upon that. Make a plan that's accurate for your circumstance, your personality, your situation. The problem is most people, they're just not honest about their circumstance, their situation, their strengths, and their weaknesses. They're just not. This is, they're just not. Okay? We, we have elevated opinions of ourselves. In almost everything we do. And unfortunately, in this business, you will be exposed. All right? Possible solutions. Track all your trades so you have an accurate account of what's really happening. Oh my gosh, video record yourself trading and play it back. Take notes. Uncomfortable? Get used to it. Live in uncomfort till it becomes comfortable. Build a severe consequence system. Get an accountability partner. Put in the hard work, not just staring at charts. A lot of you guys love to scan for charts, but you don't like to work on your mental deficiencies. It's too easy to look at charts, and it's really hard to look at the person in the mirror and try to work on that. Think about it. Sophia said that was me, okay? I bet you she doesn't have a problem looking at charts. Bet you she can just pull up her platform and scan for charts all day long. But recording herself and playing it back, that's like, hey, don't really want to do that. I might have to confront some deep-seated fears, some issues, some problems. Well, you're not going to fix those problems if, one, you can't face them, accept them, and start moving forward. This is how it works, guys. See, I tell you guys this frequently, and I think you guys just think it's, an, it's a comment of arrogance. It's not a comment of arrogance. The 1% are the 1% because they are the 1%. They are the people that are willing to record themselves. They're willing to put a genuinely severe consequence system in front of them. They're willing to have an accountability partner. They're willing to work on the hard stuff, the stuff that nobody wants to work on. Another analogy, because I love analogies. You guys have probably heard this one from Kobe, right? Some rookie on the team begged him, help, help. I, need, I want some guidance, Kobe. You the man, help me out. He's like, okay, meet me at the gym at 4 o'clock. 
The kid shows up. Kobe's not there. He sees Kobe in the locker room later. He goes, dude, I showed up at 4 o'clock. Where were you? And he goes, I meant 4 a.m. What? Why? Why is that an important analogy? One, because it's real. Two, that person couldn't conceive the idea that he meant 4 a.m. He just assumed it was 4 p.m. Why? Because in his mind, in his paradigm, working out at 4 a.m. is just not something you do. Now, all of a sudden, just learning that. He didn't even go to the practice because he missed it. Just knowing that Kobe is willing to be there at 4 a.m. has changed his paradigm. Now it's like, wow, okay. So if I want to be as good as Kobe, it starts at 4 a.m. And that's just showing up. The rest of it, I don't even know because I wasn't there. Think about it. The 1% are the 1% because of the 1%. You just don't believe it. You just think those people are lucky. You think those people are privileged. You think those people have better at... See, this is the problem. You guys always want to label everything. Stop. Just get to work. Stop complaining about this. Stop complaining about that. Stop worrying about your neighbors. Just stop. Get to work. You're wasting time. Yeah, but... No, there's no but. You want it or you don't. Get off your ass. Stop watching Oprah. Start doing things. Then ask yourself the alternative. If I don't, where will I be? If I don't get off my ass, where will I be? If I don't get up at 4 a.m., like, where will I be? If I don't hold this trade till target, where will I be? If I don't video record myself, where will I be? If I don't take accountability for my actions, where will I be? I don't know. Working for and dealing with the man for your boss? Driving through that rush hour traffic? Less freedom? Less f flexibility? Less income potential? Guys, that's the whole idea here. Even the great ones do things they're uncomfortable doing. They already have a motivation that's above yours. That's why they show up at 4 a.m. They actually want to be there at 4 a.m. But trust me, there are things they don't want to do sometimes. That's just life. It's called being human. We don't love everything we do, but we love what we do. Set goals and stay accountable to them, okay? And here's, I guess some, I don't want to say breeds confidence, but I guess something to make you feel a little better, guys. You don't have to be perfect. Oh. <gasps> Newsflash, you don't have to be perfect to, to, be, to succeed in this world. See, this is the part I wish most people understood. The average person is so average that to be above average actually doesn't take all that much more effort. Let me repeat what I just said. The average person is so average that to be better above average doesn't actually take that much more effort. To be exceptional? That takes a lot of effort. And I would hope you all strive for excellence. But not everyone's going to strive for true exceptionalism. But you don't have to be perfect. Two are all or none targets. You only need a 33% batting average to break even. Three are, you only need a 25% bet to break even. You just need to win one out of four to break even. Most traders, when they follow a plan, will achieve at least a 35 or 40% batting average. Most. Yes, they will. Most traders, even ones that aren't that good at charts. But remember, you're going to see 5, 10, 15 trade losing streaks at times, depending on the approach. Why is it important? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's part of 2R or 3R or nothing. Right? It still makes money. That's why it doesn't matter, because it still makes money. Because the biggest reason people get frustrated, which leads to mistakes, is not fully understanding their plan and how it could potentially play out. Tell me I'm wrong. Honestly, if you went out there and did 3 RL or nothing, you lost eight trades in a row, you were like, screw this, I'm going to quit 3 RL or nothing. Why? Because you didn't understand that it was possible or even likely that you could lose eight trades in a row. But if you went in knowing that it's going to happen,
not might happen. It will happen. You will lose eight trades in a row at some point doing three RO or nothing. Whether it happens in the first three months, three years, or 30 years, it's going to happen. But if you went in thinking that's never going to happen, well, it would be pretty frustrating, wouldn't it? You must know and understand that aiming for three R targets means there's a 100% chance you'll have a 10 trade losing streak at some point. It's just over enough, enough trades, a long enough period of time. Is it one trade? Is it a thousand trades? Is it a million trades? Well, it's going to happen. This is why we say never get two up or never get two down, right? When you're winning, don't get too high on yourself. You're not that good. When you're losing, don't get too down. You're really not that bad. The odds will even out, okay? So we'll end with this. We'll end with this. I find that often people think success happens overnight by chance to some people, but never them. I've lost count of how many times I've been told how lucky I am to have achieved financial freedom in a short space of time. We could just take out the short space of time part, just say achieve financial freedom. I find that often people think success happens overnight by chance to some people, but never them. The average person is average because they're average. They think like an average person. They work like an average person. They act like an average. In fact, everything they do is average. They literally look for average jobs. Oh, it pays 60 grand a year. I'll take it. Uh, first question, how many vacation days do I get? Oh, okay. Yep, you're a great employee. Put you in that box. Hey, what are the benefits? Okay, put you in that box. How many hours a day do I have to work? I'll put you in that box. Those aren't the right questions. Those are average person questions. I want to come home. 5.30, eat dinner at 6 o'clock. By 7 o'clock, I'm on the sofa, pop the beer open, and what's the rom-com that's on or whatever HBO shows on. Oh, Succession's on. Oh, Yellowstone's on. Great. So you're watching TV shows about other people who are successful, and then you're going to go to work the next day, and you're going to see somebody do this or that, and they're going to, oh, you're so lucky. It's pathetic. But, but, I'm happy for it. I'm truly happy for it. I can't imagine if we lived in a world of overachievers. What would it be like if we lived in a world of overachievers? Imagine if everybody had Tiger Woods motivation, Michael Jordan motivation. Imagine, oh my gosh, how hard would life be? Thankfully, most people don't. Most people don't even have half that motivation. They literally want to do what I just said. Literally. They literally go buy their lottery ticket because they think luck is the guide to success, the key to success. They want a job that they only have to work five days a week. I'm not working weekends. Oh, nine to five, that's it. You know? 60 grand a year, ah, it pays the bills. Ah, oh, health care, great. It's got a pension too. Oh my gosh, what an amazing job. I get three weeks vacation and all national holidays off. Pfft. Okay. Good. You go be your badass average self. Thank you for that. Truly. Some people out there are listening go, you're such an arrogant asshole right now, Jared. I am not. I'm just telling you, whether you like it or not, that's how the world works. It's how it works. It's not my opinion of how the world works. It's how it works. Go people watch. The average person only wants to be average. That's it. Let them be average. Makes your life a little bit easier. So if you don't want to be average anymore, stop being average. Stop doing things that average people do. Do things that successful people do. Do things that inspirational people do. Do things that motivated people do. Do things that great people do. It's like a relationship. You want to find somebody and marry somebody that lifts you up, not pushes you down. It's a team, right? 
You complement each other. You don't want to pull all the weight, and they shouldn't have to pull all the weight either. Same thing in life. Surround yourself with people that lift you up. Surround yourself with people that make you better. Surround yourself with people that challenge you to be better. Or just go be average. That's okay too. Seriously, that's okay too. So we saw it last week. You plan. You implement the plan. You measure the plan. You assess the plan. You improve upon it. And then you do this a million times again. Over and over and over. Guys, why do, why do you track yourself when you're on the Peloton? Why do you track yourself when you're on the treadmill? Isn't it just a microcosm of the planning cycle of success? Isn't that all that is? Seriously, isn't that all it is? You're out there and you're like, all right, my goal today is to run five, five miles. Okay, that's the plan. I'm going to go out and I'm going to see. Oh, I was only able to run 4.2 miles today. Okay. Start over. A week later, oh, I was able to run five miles today, but I did it in, I don't know, an hour. Well, it's kind of slow. It's 12 minutes a mile. Okay, well, I'm assessing it and going, all right. It's an improvement because last time I only ran 4.2 miles. Now I ran five. That's good. But now I need to change something. And then you just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over again until you've achieved your goal. And then when you get to your goal, I'm going to tell you a little secret. You're capable of way more than your goal. You're going to get to your goal and you're going to get there and go, why did I set my goal so low? It happened to me. And I didn't think it was a low goal. I got there and I was like, you're far too young to be satisfied with this goal. Let's, let's do, let's just keep going. Let's just push it. Why not? You love what you do. Just keep pushing it. And then you'll look back and go, wow, I was capable of so much more than I thought. You sit there and go, man, it'd be a great goal if I could just have five miles at eight minutes a mile. That's 40 minutes. That'd be great. You get there and you're like, I can do more than this. I can be faster. I can run longer. Same in life. Wow, I had this goal, but now I've reached it. Let's, let's go for more. Why not? Don't give up on life. Give some of those things some thought, guys. We talked about a lot of stuff today. We don't talk about one chart today because it wasn't about charts. It was about you. And what are you willing to do to be the best that you can be? That's really all that matters. And it doesn't matter to your neighbors. It doesn't matter to strangers. It only matters to you. Now, I've come to find that success breeds success. Meaning, the more successful you are, the more people you're around are successful, the more people you can help and lift them up to, so those people can also be successful. Meaning, when you become successful, you rarely do it fully and completely by yourself. You usually drag other people with you. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. It's addictive almost. So there's really, in a lot of ways, nothing negative about success. I mean, as long as you're not, you know, dying over stress and killing yourself because you're on meth all day long and cocaine because you can't keep up, that's different. But success breeds success. The problem is starting. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be frustrations. There's going to be a lot of things in your way. But as we said earlier, it only depends on how you see those things. Do you see them as insurmountable obstacles or do you just see them as a little speed bump on your way to the top of the mountain it really just depends on how you see the world if you see the world with positivity and joy and fruitful abundance you'll get those things no it's not a joke some of that stuff sounds corny to people and not all successful people are out there reading the secret or out there listening to tony robbins but they're living their lives that way it's just who they are. It's how they're wired. So when you have a frustrating day, 
Just ask yourself, well, what did I learn today? And how can I use what I've learned to be better tomorrow? And then you'll build on that. And you'll do that every day and every week and every month and every year. And you're going to look back and it's not going to happen in a day or a week or a month. It's going to take years, sometimes decades. And you're going to look back and you're going to go, my goodness, my goodness. The first, I don't know, thousand feet to Mount Everest was brutal. But how the heck did I get up to 29,000 feet? After that first thousand feet, it was like I thought I wanted to quit. I just kept going. One foot after the other. One foot after the other, no matter what. Why? Because I couldn't live with myself if I gave up on my dreams. I'll leave you with that. I couldn't live with myself if I gave up on my dreams. Make sure your why is big enough and you'll never think about quitting. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week. Mm -hmm.